Shalom, call hello, which is all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. I want to give peace and mercies to the 144,000 hopeful elect out there. Also, I want to give peace and mercies to the one third men, women, and children that are going to be saved. And I also want to give salutations to all you Akim out there that are out there preaching this word in our truthfulness and sincerity. Today, I want to get straight into it. And I'll come up with a title for the video when I'm uh, done recording. But this is the brother Karataza. And I'm going to start in the book of Sirach. Of the Apocrypha, also known as Ecclesiasticus, and this is Sirach chapter 12 and verse 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So the scriptures is telling us is comparing our enemies to iron, and the reason why it's comparing our enemies to iron is because no matter how much you polish you put on iron no matter how much you wipe it off at some point in time iron is going to rust it so let's read that again never never trust thine enemy for like as iron rusted so is his wickedness so our enemy is always going to be wicked towards us our enemy is always going to come at us he's going to be our enemy till he is destroyed off the face of this earth who is this enemy well, let's go into the scriptures to find out. Because Israel, who is you so-called Negroes, you so-called Latinos, and you so-called Native Americans, you do have more than one enemy. Your main enemy, the so-called white man, is Esau, but you also have enemies of all the other nations. And I'm going to go to, this is the book of Psalms. Chapter 83, and I'm going to start at the top. Verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O Yahweh. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O Yahweh, by Shem Shah. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And if you look up the word tumult, let's look it up right now. This is out of, I'm going in the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary to look this up, my minute. Tumult. A state of noisy confusion or disorder. A state of great mental or emotional confusion. So, if you got a couple working brain cells you can put together that our enemies have created a tumult against us so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos and so-called Native Americans a constant state of confusion and a constant, constant state of mental duress so like it's because when you at a, when you in a constant state of mental duress and a constant state of confusion you don't have time to worship your power and our power is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Continuing on, they have taken Selakia, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. We got enemies that hate us. Continuing on, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that that name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And that's the state that a lot of us Israelites are in right now because they cut us off. Esau and his cohorts cut us off from us remembering who we are. But according to the book of Baruch in the Apocrypha, 
the Most High said that He would put it in our hearts and in our minds to wake us back up and bring us back into remembrance of who we are as a people. And that's prophecy, and it's being done right now. Matter of fact, let me get that for you. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 2, and I'm going to just start at verse 29. If ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into Salaka, shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. And that's where we are. We, no matter where we, the Israelites are in the face of this earth, like the four corners of this earth, whether you be so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans, and also you confusion of faces, because you're going to have Israelites that look like Esau, but really, that's just because of confusion of faces, really they are Israelites, and how can you tell? You can tell through the Spirit. Continuing on, for I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people, and yeah, we are stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked is another word for saying we hard-headed. We some hard-headed niggas. We some hard-headed spiggers, and we some hard-headed feather hats. Continuing on, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves, and that's what's happening right now. Are we not in the land of our captivities? Whether you in America, whether you in Nigeria, whether you in London, uh, Australia, we are starting to remember ourselves in the land of our captivities. And shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, their power, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivities and think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. And how about Shem and how shy? And that's what we're doing right now. Not only are we remembering the name, remembering ourselves in the land of our captivity, Salakia, but we're also remembering the name of our power, which is Yahweh by Hashem Shai. Going back into um, Psalms 83, verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom, which is the fucking devil, the so-called white man. And the Ishmaelites, the stinking ass Arabs at the fucking liquor stores. Of Moab, the stinking ass Asian people selling that nasty ass Chinese food and the Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, and Ammon is the so called Japanese slant eyed dumbasses who, when they lose a fight, they kill themselves, which is good. The best healing is a dead healing. Now, going back into the book of Sarai. Bear with me, I can. Oh, yeah. Continue on in verse 11. Though he humble himself and go in. So, like it. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. That's right. You never trust your, uh, these heathens, our enemies, at no point in time. Even though they smile, they are fucking enemies. But Jake is running around this bitch acting like we don't got enemies. Like everything is all good. This past. Yeah, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? It was the 4th of July. It was disgusting watching all these niggas and spigots and feather hats celebrating this goddamn 
devil's holiday. It wasn't your independence uh, carrying on. I'm going to go to the book of uh, Psalms. Bear with me, I can. Hopefully, this video is quick and it's edifying to you. Yeah, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil. Yet were they drawn swords and read that self explanatory. I'm gonna read that again and break it down for you to the best of my ability. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. We could just use an example of that shit every day. Jake go to work, the motherfuckers who run that bitch, which is more nine times out of ten heathens, they were smoother than butter. But at the same time, they plotting on trying to get you up out that motherfucker to fire your ass. This happens all the time. Jake go to work and get plenty of smiles, but then he get that dagger stuck in his back. I got another scripture that I want to bring out about your enemy and how we can't be friends with our enemies. An enemy is not your friend. You want to destroy, you want to annihilate your enemy and wipe them off the face of the earth. Uh, I'm a, well, first of all, I'm going to start with uh, Job chapter 9 and verse 24. Oldie, but never, goodie, you never get tired of it. Because we're going to break down who the enemy is, who the wicked is of this earth. This is Job chapter 9 and verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, if not, where and who is he? And who runs this earth? Who runs the world right now? No matter where you go. The so-called white man, the devil, the wicked. That's who the wicked is. So in case you don't know who your number one enemy is, Israel, it's coming to you out of these scriptures. Now, going back to this is Isaiah chapter 26. In verse 10, and it reads, Let favor be showed to the wicked. And I just explained, I just read to you out of the scriptures who the wicked is. Yet will he not learn righteousness? In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly? And will not behold the majesty of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Shai. So you can't even teach this fucking devil. Righteousness, it's not gonna happen. He is your mortal enemy, along with all these other the other heathens I told you about at the beginning of this video. And I don't want to make this too long, so I'm gonna get a couple more precepts in, and then we're gonna wrap it up. And hopefully, this this video is edifying to the few who come across it, Lord willing. Um, yeah. I'm going to go there. This is the book of Daniels. Chapter 12. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's like this. Chapter 12 and verse 10. Oh, this is a good one. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked. And we just, I just showed you in Job chapter 9 and verse 24 who the wicked was. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked who ruled the earth right now. Self explanatory, man. But the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Let me give one more scripture. We're going to go back into the Apocrypha. This is. We're going into Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, and verse 10. But executing thy judgments upon them by little and little, thou gavest them place of repentance. But not being ignorant, 
that they were a naughty generation and that their malice was bred in them. It was bred into these fucking devils, these fucking, also these other heathens to be wicked and do malice against us. And that their cogitation would never be changed. And if we look up the word cogitation, the word cogitation means to their thought, their thoughts. So it said their cogitation would never change. Their thought would never change. Let's see what the dictionary says about the word cogitation. Bear with me. I can, because uh, I just looked it up. So I got it on deck. This is out of Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, Cogitation, the act of cogitating meditation. So their meditation of being wicked uh, never change. The capacity to think or reflect a single thought. So these, man, your enemy not going to never change. Like I said, I'm going to, like this scripture that I brought out in the beginning, I'm going to go back to it because that's what I'm going to end this video with. Shit. So like that could be. This is Ecclesiasticus, better known otherwise. It's known as Sirach chapter 12 and verse 10. Never trust thy enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So with that, Lord willing, this video was edifying to the hopeful elect. I want to say Shalom. I want to get all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. I want to get double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. I want to get salutations to all you Akim that's out here preaching this gospel in our truthfulness and sincerity. And hopefully we all make it. Hopefully we all part of the elect. And we almost out of here, Akim. Shalom.